<clears throat> for this part four stage, I'm going to try adding a bit of detail, further detail to the watercolour. And I've got a mixture of um, cadmium red and yellow ochre, or yellow ochre mostly, and a little cadmium red <clears throat> for the uh, peg tiles on the roof of this building on the left. While that's wet, I'm hoping to just apply it a little more thickly with this number three rind brush. I'm going to try and put some green onto that before it has a chance to dry. So green is um, cerulean blue and a little bit of cadmium yellow. Let's see if I can get an impression of the algae on the roof. Same on this roof here. I like the architecture to be fairly precise so I've, I'm keeping this uh, colour uh, to fairly precise edges with a little brush. And these are fiddly little shapes but they're important that I don't of overpaint this a little bit of lead just below there, which is light, a little bit of red or colour there. Just the way the wet into wet catches the diffused quality of this roof, which has got green on it with algae, but also got traces of red too. Far away roofs, I'm going to try and make a little less bright. So there's a tiny bit of roof there. It's a mixture of green and red. And there's a far roof. <clears throat> this is a bit of an interpretation from the image, but oh, these look like roofs to me, so what's going behind there? going to leave that alone. Looking for anything that's a similar colour like this wall here which is brick. Looks like it. No, not brick. Possibly um, screening. And I've got it in the wrong place. So that's up here, screening for the cafe on the corner. Something like that. So a different use of the brush, different edges, not quite so much stippling, um, or more, just flatter edges, smoother edges. A little bit of roof there, and another small view of peg tile roof. It's a little bit strong. Put some green into that. Push it away a bit. A little bit of green on there as well. Just push that away a little bit. Lifted out the flag to make it lighter there. So, um, light of course produces shadow, and shadow I think would be influenced by the sky. So I've made a blue grey with ultramarine ochre, tiny bit of crimson, a little bit of blue grey, slightly more towards. A warm blue-grey, that's a warm blue-grey, that's cooler, so that's got a little bit of crimson in the mix. Where is shadow then? Well, shadow is certainly here on this wall, underneath the tree, just there, just there. This 
an element of shadow and underneath this um, parapet of the bridge and cast also by uh, the tree, this tree which gives an angle, an idea of the angle of the sun the height of the sun, something like that stippling and dabbing There's a creeper there, ivy of some sort, climbing up that wall. A lot of the rest of this bridge is in shadow, but dappled light. <clears throat> There's a trace of warmth in that uh, structural part of the bridge, the arch. So the towers are a mixture of interesting colours in shadow towards blue-grey and, and perhaps another layer of um, of wash on this and pencil even for detail of the what I'm guessing is Kentish ragstone uh, construction anyway there's a textured textured element to the stonework little bits of varied colour some brown, some blue-grey not all the same colour wet into wet so this is the far away tower, which has got some green on it in the in the colouring. Little bits of different colour, blue and green, um, blue grey rather and green grey, and the edge of the tree, which we mentioned, we'd be painting by not painting it or leaving out. So I can work on that right down to there and leave leave that. So brush held upright, this facade here is in shadow. So that's again that sort of blue-grey, a little bit darker at the top perhaps, more contrast, and shadow of bands or day edges around the buildings. A little bit of shadow on this further building, just light against dark and leave a tiny gap there. So the the parapet, oh, there's a shadow edge under that, but I'd like for this to dry, possibly get a bit of granulation to work there, which is um, the separation that occurs with watercolour when there's a little bit too much water in the mix. Um, I'm hoping that's dried enough to try this nearer tower and to, to paint into the edge, shadow edge here. It's going round against the light, so that's against the light. So although this is quite a large brush, it's still possible I'm hoping to make thinnish lines with it. Darker just there. And darker shadow here, but leaving that bit of crenellation out. Leave it lighter. So blue-grey dissolved in water. Cast shadow coming across to there. It's a cylinder obviously so a big part of this is in shadow, some of it green, a bit of green on that edge, some of it more dark, some of it blue-grey. I'll work into the uh, shadows cast by the um, rings of stone, or the lintels, edges or bands, so there's a shadow coming across there another faint shadow there, not very strong another one there something else just there but it's really the edge against the tree that's the most significant uh, 
sharp edge. We tried to keep that fresh. Not too much water on the brush. We'll try and make that edge descriptive, lively. That's the essence of watercolour, painting in reverse, painting, thinking of the shapes that you're making by leaving them out. So that's a little bit of a gap there. And underneath here, a little bit too much water on the brush possibly, not too much water on the brush at a time. Let's paint that underneath there and break this up a little bit more, little dabs, dots and just come down this edge here so there are glimpses of the stonework through the tree little spots of dark just summarising it, simplifying and then this edge just with a clean damp brush I want to just merge that across a little bit so it dissolves because there isn't really a very sharp edge there with this transition into the sunnier side of the tower. There is a description in the texture of the stonework more so just just what's left there on the on the lit side of the building something like that I'm wondering whether to do that partly with watercolor and partly with pencil afterwards that's a sort of stippled curving mark there to make, give an impression of stone texture into light It take a little while to build up. The stonework is not um, particularly, not, not completely even. Let's take that across there, break that down a bit. Yeah, I don't want to, don't want to take away the, the light completely because that is quite light on this side down here. So let's try and Preserve that light on that edge. A little bit more shadow and texture on this part of the building. Shadow, shadow. So that gives an idea of how we're going to treat the, these other buildings uh, with their stone texture. One of the oldest devices in painting is light against dark. So here you've got light dark, admittedly that's dark light and then dark again or darker uh, against this edge with the blue grey. Shadow under there and shadow along here and stonework is sort of partly in shade but definitely this edge here is contrasting and there's a door just down there so along here texture of stonework brush held upright trying to give an impression albeit very loosely of the character of this building Taken a lot of stones to build it. This buttress in shadow on one side. So shadow here. Shadow coming down. These are quite complicated areas, much like that, and a cast shadow from the buttress thinking about what you're not painting, thinking about the the shapes left by the lighter green painted earlier. 
This is entirely in shadow and it's stonework so that's where it would be helpful to get a bit of granulation going, having that just a little too wet perhaps. The ultramarine part of the paint mixture separates out and sinks to the into the pockets in the paper and that's what happens when there's enough water and that to put, water equals time time for that to happen as the colours settle before they dry and that granulation effect is, means that the watercolour is doing the work of creating an impression of stone texture try and come down into that corner and into this little corner here with some background impression of stonework just behind here difficult working into negative spaces and keeping horizontal lines in gaps but an impression anyway of the stone being darker behind this tree. Use of the brush as a drawing instrument really. Then watercolour is sometimes referred to as watercolour drawing. So I'm hoping that's thrown that tree forwards. It's, it's Because it's so thin in foliage it isn't, it hardly appears to be there. That can be slightly darker. That can be slightly darker, although I maybe should wait for it to dry. So all of this area, I'm going to give it the same sort of treatment, and I'm going to look at the shadow over there, and shadow on this side of the um, river. But I'm going to also vary the colour a little bit as I'm going, and I um, hope to show that completed in part five.